Now, in order to properly document this app, I need to take you back in time. With the one for the coming age. Connection. Constellation. Because we keep you at the center stage. Constellation. Tabombeki was still the president. For the youth, television was the most consumed media and nothing rivaled the early 2K Zero TV. In fact, around 2006, Zero TV was the main focus of the Kellogg's star in you. Where Tumi Foster was chosen to be the new face of Yo TV in front of thousands of kids at the then Coca-Cola Dome. The show that hands down raised everybody between the ages of 8 and 17 was Dragon Ball Z given to us at a speed of one episode a day. Served to us by dub on two. I had just been introduced to DSTV, which for me was the three music channels, Channel O, MTV Bass, and Trace, which were the channels really introducing the sounds of the streets to the youth, hip hop, <laughs> and house. Out on the streets. Jersey. What's with the attitude? What's with the attitude? Consisting of Ishmael, the Kwaito legend, Crazy Lou, the kids presenter, Bongani Fasi, the talented son of a legend, and L.E.S., the new exciting face in hip-hop, was the sound of the street. No. <laughs> and who could forget the most legendary song that Bluetooth gave us? Sister Petina! All right. Yes. Relax. Can you hear that? Can you hear that? Can you guys hear that? Where were you? Do you remember? Cue the what? 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 The hottest streetwear brand which every kid had on was definitely Ama Keep Keep. However, these were things that weren't necessarily new to the youth. What was new and exciting? Cell phones. I know it's normal now for every Tom, Dick and Harry to have a cell phone, but back then, a very select few who were lucky enough to have a cell phone brought them with to school. Unlike today, there were a myriad of phones, each with their own operating system to suit the personality of the user. However, we did have phones that were dubbed the student cards. Ish. Konji, you guys don't even know what student cards are, ne? Okay, class, this is strictly for AMA 2000. Have you guys ever seen these? These were called public funds. And how they worked was, you would put coins in them. Or a dedicated card which you would load money in. Mostly students had this, so... Bing, 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 bing. Student card. So when cell phones became cool, the cell phones that everyone had was dubbed the uh, Temba. Uh, Goku Super Saiyan Four. The first student card that I can remember was the thirty-three ten Nokia. But when we got into the color phones, it was definitely the Motorola V360. 
and then the V3 Razor. And then the Samsung E250. And then the LG Chatterbox. Before BlackBerry came through and fucked everything up. I'll explain how BlackBerry killed this era, but for now, just know <laughs> that these cell phones hold a special place in some old people's hearts right now. <laughs> Look, I didn't have any of these phones. Pella, I was a cool kid. I was Nokia gang all the way. My N70, which Lebu stole. Lebu, if you're watching this 15 years later, your mama a hoe. Then the N80, then the N96. I was always on point with it. I would be calling girls on those phones all the time. It's almost expensive as cock back then, but what was the point of having a phone if you weren't calling girls or sending through that SMS? <laughs> Until they stopped calling. My then girlfriend told me to download Migzit so that we can chat for free. What the In the year 1999, a website called Napster.com was created by founders Sean Parker and Sean Fanning. The basic functionality of the site was peer-to-peer -peer sharing, meaning people could put the contents of their computer on the site for other people to download. The one thing that people did upload and download the most was music. In fact, they ended up being dubbed the music sharing website. If you think about it, as a student, would you rather waste time getting into a taxi, going to the mall, waiting in line to spend a whole lot of money on an album just to listen to one song you heard on the radio Fuck you. or Sister Petina! Alright. Minjix. Yeah! They sued the shit out of Napster. Ran them out of business. But it was already too late. The thing about the internet, once it's there, it's there forever. If you cut off the head, three heads will grow in the place of that head. Opening up a space for sites like LimeWire, DatPiff, and the South African favorite, Napster. Dot win, dot through. Now, Napster was not really a peer-to-peer -peer sharing website, but a download hub. Sort of like Google Play, if it allowed you to download pictures, music, and videos besides apps. Now, you have to remember, we didn't have data bundles back then. It was just a type. And it was something like one cent per megabyte, which if you think about it, was more expensive. So you had to be very economical about how you used your airtime. For example, you could download Mixit from Mixit.com if you were into that sort of thing. But if you were a cool kid like me, T -t Today, Junior? The thing about Napster is that you could download Mixit skins that suited the Mixit look you wanted. You could even get added features on your Mixit while listening to music that you downloaded from Napster. In fact, what the hell was Mixit? And how did this Mixit work? Mixit or Mixit was a company created in 2003. Why 2003? Because that was the year GPRS and 2G technology was widely implemented in South Africa, meaning phones could now connect to the internet. This man, Hermanus Irmo... 
Hermanus Hermor. Hermanus Her. You know what? This sounds like some Harry Potter spell. Let me stop before back to I'm your lawyer next door. This man initially tried to create a game which was SMS based. When it obviously didn't work because of how expensive SMSs were, he turned to an untapped market in Africa. Instant messaging. After buying our partner shares, Hermanos, he, this guy created the Mixit Lifestyle Company. So how did it work? When you clicked on the Mixit app, you would actually first have to connect to the internet in order to sign into your account. Think of it like entering your Facebook account using your phone browser. This obviously needed an internet connection, so if you had 0.00 rand airtime, you wouldn't be able to sign in and see your contacts. This would be coined logging on. Because of how cheap messages were, people would avoid using airtime. By all costs. In fact, raise your hand if you also abuse the please call me feature by sending the famous please call logon. No hands. Still I can't believe now because of these login issues, once you were logged in, if for any reason you would lose your internet connection, you would lose connection to the app, which would be disconnected from chatting, and you would have to send the dreaded... <laughs> anyway, when you signed up for an account, you had two contacts already added to your friends list. The plug, called Trade Post, and everyone's friend, Joe... Bank. I'll come back to them in a sec. In order to add a contact to mix it, you'd add the person's phone number, sort of like WhatsApp. But unlike WhatsApp, you couldn't choose your contact's name and the names you would see on mix it. <laughs> I'm a pretty girl, Riri. I'm a too malicious. I'm a manda money maker. Hey. In fact, everyone who had mixed it back in the day, please write your mixed it name down below. I feel like dying today. <laughs> when you first log on, you would have to learn the abbreviations. Because no one was about to write full words with this keypad. Are you sure about that? A-S-L-R. Age, sex, location, race. Yeah, ne? that last time. <laughs> Different times different times so this would usually be sent if you didn't know the contact on the other side i'll tell you why in a second b r b be right back when you quickly need to log off dc disconnected woo 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 too <laughs> what you up to lump lying on my bed now the next one is a bit of a double entendre k hey. This means you need to go perform necrophilic fellatio on your own dead corpse. Sorry. LOL, LMFAO, LMMMIMMMP. Laugh out loud, laughing my fucking black ass off. Laugh my yin, my yin, my yin, my p. So, back to Trade Post and Joe Banker. Joe Banker was the in app wallet for the in app purchases you'd make to Trade Post. Young Moolah, baby! <laughs> such as wallpapers, games, and skins. Trade Post would also offer free products, like chat rooms. Guys, this is where most of the mixed magic would happen. There were chat rooms for everything. Every high school had its own chat room, colored only chat rooms, no under 18 chat rooms, Nike chat rooms, music chat rooms, varsity chat rooms, Azisha Ngama 2 chat rooms, and on and on and on and on. On. That's why when you would go private with someone from a chat room, you would use the abbreviation <sighs> I miss mix it, man. September 2009, the Blackberry 8520 is released. It makes its way to South African shores by 2010. Now, this was hot on the heels of the LG Chatterbox having been released. Notice anything weird about this phone? Anything weird or anything different about these two phones right here? The QWERTY keypad was the hottest new phone feature and nobody wanted to go back to the number keypad. As the year went on, more and more, people started going to acquire the new industrial expensive looking Blackberry. Now, Blackberry was not a smartphone, but it couldn't also be pinned down as a feature phone like the feature phones that came before it. However, Blackberry had two features that would have everyone flocking to it. BIS, which is basically free internet, and the big one, B B M. 
Now, I'm not gonna go too deep into Blackberry, but if you want a separate video about it, let me know down in the comment section. Gang gang. However, with these two features, Blackberry would single-handedly deal the first huge blow to Mixit's user base, with each Blackberry sold from Mixit to BBM as an instant messenger, which was virtually at no cost with a better interface and cooler features. Now, the second big blow would come from the company itself I floppy lela guys so since the inception of mixit it's always been on feature phones with the introduction of android and ios mixit would refuse to adapt to the new operating systems opting rather to stay on feature phones the user base would go from 50 million users in 2012 to 4 million in 2014, the competition, which was adapting, such as WhatsApp, Facebook, and even WeChat, started overtaking the market by 2014, and the power struggles within the company also caused the decay and the end of an era. So, in closing, I want to Kumbula mix it for the amazing childhood that it gave us as millennials. <laughs> the amazing laughs we would have with Joe Banker and the tears we would share with Trade Post when no one else was responding to us. I miss the constant brunch of please call logons that made us feel broke but hopeful simultaneously. In fact, now that I think about it, the first few times I ever got nudes was because of Mix It. Thank you for the wonderful memories, you amazing, lost, and forgotten soul. Before I end this video, I'd like for us to please observe a moment of silence for our fallen soldier. All right, moment of silence over, guys. Three things. The first thing is Patreon. Patreon, guys. Here it is in front of you. Please click and subscribe to the Patreon too. Why? Because, bitch, I am broke. And that's not a joke. Number two, guys, please go into the subscribe button and click it, click it, click it because you like it. And then press the like button also. Also, leave a comment. Don't be slack, guys. That's the second thing. Number three, I'm not going to laugh alone. I want you guys to laugh with me when I play the ending credits right now. Awe!